first, I would like to say that uh, the mayor had an operational uncertainty to all of those who doesn't know. I talked to him Monday. He seemed to be in good spirits. Can't wait to get back to his seat, and I can't wait either. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep him in our prayers and, and pray for him that he has a speedy recovery. Okay. Our agenda for tonight. Uh, we can we stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, and afterwards we can ask Pastor who to lead us in prayer, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray here. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to come together and to make decisions that will help our town. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless the council and bless the town manager, bless each and every officer in this, in this organization. Lord, we ask that you will help us to be together on one accord to do the thing which is right. No, Father, we give you the blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Council, before we get started with the agenda, we're going to need to amend the agenda for this evening. We need to hold a closed section at the end of this meeting. The purpose of the closed session is to continue discussion regarding applicant for the position of town manager. Can I get a motion? So to do. Second. Okay, we've had a motion and a second. Any discussions? If there's none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> motion carried. <laughs> uh, we would, we would like to welcome Dr. Michael Sessler, Superintendent of Edison Public Schools. He has a little presentation that he wants to give to us tonight. Dr. Sessler, would you approach the program, please, sir? Did I pronounce your name right? Sasser, yes, sir. You did a great job. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilman, good evening. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you. Um, Typically, we come and we talk about schools and we talk about accolades, awards, test scores, things that the system has earned. But on behalf of the Board of Education this evening, I like to talk about people, and in particular, one person who has dedicated their time to our community and has certainly made a difference in Edith and Chowan schools by elevating what we're able to do as a school community. So I'm here on behalf of the Board of Education because on August 3rd, 2021, at their regular board meeting, they adopted a resolution recognizing the illustrious career of town manager Anne-Marie Knighton. So I'd like to read that to the group. Whereas the Edenton Chowan Schools Board of Education recognizes Anne-Marie Knighton's 33 years of service as town manager of Edenton, North Carolina, and whereas the Edenton Chowan Schools Board of Education praises Anne-Marie Knighton for being mindful of the interests of all citizens and for working tirelessly to improve the condition of our community so we may all thrive now and into the future. And whereas the Edenton Chowan Schools Board of Education commends Anne-Marie Knighton for her professionalism, compassion and approach to building relationships and for modeling the tenets of public service faithfully and with great distinction each and every day. And whereas the Edenton Chowan Schools Board of Education acknowledges Anne-Marie Knighton's commitment to care for and advocate for the children of Chowan County has positively influenced public education. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Edenton Chowan Schools Board of Education expresses great appreciation to Anne-Marie Knighton for her extraordinary leadership and unwavering belief in our school system. 
and be it further resolved that Anne Marie Knighton's dedication to establish an inclusive community, support public education, and nurture exciting learning opportunities for every single child of Chowan County has truly transformed the educational experience afforded to our students. So on behalf of the Board of Education, we'd like to formally recognize you, Anne Marie, and just thank you for everything you have done to our community and our school family. members. I'm going to say something y'all all know. Anne-Marie is far too humble and um, <laughs> we, do, we do know that it does have a lot to do with her and just I echo Dr. Sasser's sentiments and the school board's um, proud of you. It's great. Tammy, do you mind pulling up the presentation? So y'all are all aware that we have gotten, received a uh, grant that you have graciously agreed to match, uh, provide matching funds for from NCDOT to do a bicycle and pedestrian acceleration plan. Just to summarize, um, this acceleration plan is meant to take all of our previously existing plans, which our previous councils and county commissioners have been good about planning for pedestrian access and bicycle access but the point of this plan is to narrow down the top priority projects and make a plan or make a way to get at least those top priority projects started and done in the near future. Um, so we've developed a steering committee in addition to staff, Amory, myself, Corey Gooden, our public works director, uh, the Albemarle Commission DOT representative, we have several, at least four, um, just citizens of the town of Edenton who've expressed an interest in pedestrian and bicycle planning, and they are sitting with us on this steering committee. However, we are not limiting it just to that group of folks. We have got a plan for outreach to the larger community to get their input. This um, presentation is what was given to us by our consultants with Kimley Horn at our last steering committee meeting. And Tammy, if you will go to the slide that has the map. The most impressive thing, one of the most impressive things this uh, group of consultants, all young women, have done for us is develop um, a map that you'll see in just a minute. And it shows areas of the town so as you're scrolling through you can see the plans that we were using um, greenway plan the regional bicycle plan our sidewalks plan this map notice this right here that means you can scan with your phone if you're a citizen and we give you a flyer that has information about this plan you scan it with your phone you can pull up this map when you click on the different colors on the map i don't know if it'll do it from the presentation but you can see what, where they are, what streets, and what project type they were. For instance, 
Um, there are some around Philbrook's Creek, but at one point in the Greenway and Open Space Plan way back in 2006, we said, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a, a bike and walking path along Philbrook's Creek that went all the way up toward the hospital. Um, then you might have a section on um, East Water Street that you click and it says, we want to connect our sidewalk system here that came from our pedestrian plan that was only maybe five or six years old. So that's a really new feature that I'm excited about because this is, this is cutting edge planning stuff to be able to give your citizens the ability to interact immediately. Uh, Tammy, did you get the flyer that we have too? So they gave us a flyer that we had planned to distribute at Boogie on Broad um, to get the word out to our citizens and start getting input. We're going to be doing a um, site project site website, project website, so that there will be a citizen survey on that website that they can go and fill out their um, ideas for what they think are priorities off of that map, out of those projects that we have listed, and in addition, if there's something they don't see there or something that should be added, they can do that as well. Um, we will be holding another steering committee meeting at the end of August, and we will be holding a public meeting about that same time, hopefully on the same date, and I'll get that information to you as soon as it's settled by doodle poll. Um, but we're excited to be able to share the opportunity with the citizens and get their input and come up with a high priority target list and actually get moving on it. So that's what we've got. Thank you. Any questions for her? Uh, are you looking at unused railroad tracks? I did actually mention that to um, our consultants last week about our railroad bed and the potential for acquiring some of that property, um, particularly the portions that are abandoned, right. clearly. Yes, so we are looking Good. everywhere. And whatever we can do to um, announce to the general public that we've got this going on and to seek their input. I'm sure council members hear all the time, why didn't you think about this or why didn't you do that? And a lot of times my response is, that's a great idea. I didn't think about it. Why didn't you tell me Correct. earlier? So whatever we can do to publicize this, because it's got an opportunity to really change the face of our town. And <clears throat> I'd like to get as many comments as we could from the general public. Like and share on the town's Facebook page. And okay. Marie's already put the flyer out. And if you like it or you share it on your own page, that spreads it even further. OK, so great. For sure. Yes, sir. Two, two years ago, uh, we had a bicycle plan that the city bought helmets for people riding bicycles. But the people did, I haven't seen anybody with a really helmet riding a bicycle. But what did you plan this time? Councilman Coleman, didn't I talk to you recently about that? About the bicycle helmet? We, uh, we received a grant and it was all done. Is it this week or last week, a uh, hundred uh, bicycle helmets have, have, have been received for children in, in, in the area. And we've defend, uh, identified five groups, and each group will get 20 bicycle helmets, to hand out specifically for children to use, along with the information on, on, on the safety of bicycles. It'll be, uh, oh, I think, uh, uh, Eden, uh, New Eden Housing Authority, Boys and, Girl, Boys and Girls Club, uh, uh, Fanny Parker, uh, Wedgwood, and Tyler Run, I think, maybe are the, are, are the different groups that will be involved in handing out helmets to children, primarily 5 and 12 year olds, uh, to increase the safety of, uh, of their riding bicycle. The bicycle uh, accident, the number one uh, sport related accident that brings children to the emergency room. And uh, we're trying to prevent that. You said that was a public, be a public meeting on how do people feel about the bicycle plan? Yes, sir. So this plan, we're trying to develop target projects to um, enhance bicycle and pedestrian safety and access and connectivity around town. So our first public meeting will be at the end of this month 
and will be an opportunity for people to learn about what we're doing and to give their input. Yes, sir. Any more questions? Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. We go to our committee reports, administrative committee. Chairman Hi. Thank you, sir. Um, the first uh, matter that we have to discuss uh, tonight and also to vote upon, uh, we discussed at our administrative committee um, recommending um, that we designate uh, a proposed athletic accomplishment signs to be of local historical significance. The uh, reason for doing that um, would be that um, there is a particular ordinance that would allow us um, to put up the sign and to authorize the sign uh, as it's proposed. This is part one of a part two initiative. This sign recognizes the um, Eden Holmes Aces football teams, the Eden Holmes uh, baseball team um, from, I think, 2017, the track team from 2019, and also the DF Walker football teams from uh, the early 60s. And the second part of the proposal, which is not going to be a part of our recommendation tonight, is an effort to try to identify uh, the uh, persons who made it to professional sports leagues, and perhaps we could have another sign for that. But tonight, we're just talking about the championship sign, and I think Tammy has pulled up uh, what that sign would look like. Um, the administrative committee at our committee meetings recommended that the council um, pass this, and to um, designate the sign to be one of local historical significance. And I put that in the form of a motion that we authorize um, this particular sign and also to designate it as one of being uh, of local historical significance. So I put that in the form of a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? I think it's got to go good on the highway. Yeah. Let's go again. Any discussion? What would the signs be placed? We would still be working. Do we have to work with uh, DOT on that, or is that entirely a town matter? It is. Um, in order for us to get the signs installed, we have to put them off of the DOT right away because they don't allow non DOT right. signs. So okay. uh, the reason the project has taken so long, one of the reasons is we had to work with local property owners, and we've received permission from the American Legion to post on um, West Queen Street coming into town. Mm -hmm. We've seen, received permission from the hospital um, to post one on the Biden show on property on Virginia Road. Um, I think we've received permission from Colony Tire to put a sign on um, North Broad Street Extended right at the city limit lines. And then um, we've also received permission from um, Bud Perry, Perry and Sons, to post on NC32 between um, farm that the Perrys own between Old Hertford Road and Coke Avenue as you're coming into town on NC32. And um, Coach Matera was working with property owners outside of um, the city limits as well. I think one near the Albemarle Sound Bridge and maybe one on um, north of 32. So as it sits now, at least the four primary gateways coming into town. All right. Any more questions? It has been second. All of those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, the next item for the administrative committee to report on is regarding the Young Folks <coughs> Committee. Uh, each of you are aware of the desire for us to have this committee, and you're also aware that it's kind of been put on hold due to COVID and also due to some um, personnel changes that we've had here in the town. Um, I'm excited to get this started. We've got a group of, what, Amory, 14 or 15 people <laughs> interested and the administrative committee recommended at the committee uh, meetings that we move forward with hosting a special meeting to meet with the applicants uh, for appointment to the Young Folks Committee. And I'll put that in form of a motion. We have a motion 
and a second. Are there any questions? Discussions? I just have one comment. One thing that I would want us to think about, uh, sometimes if you get more than 10 or so uh, people on a committee, you know, can get too many. Uh, my idea that I have for this committee was to get ideas uh, from our young folks, and I want us to consider maybe um, asking all of them to serve. That's not a part of the motion. That would just be something that we would discuss later after we met with them if we were equally impressed with all of them and felt like they had good ideas to, to move forward. I just want y'all to keep that in mind. How many applicants do we have now? Um, got one additional one in this week from a young man, and I think we have previously reported there were, I think we received 12 or 13, but one person had moved away. So we're right around that. 13, 14 number. Yeah. Uh, have you thought about when and how this might take place? Uh, uh, not yet. The one uh, remaining piece of the puzzle that Ms. Knight and I are going to be working on is we would like to, uh, prior to that meeting, have a uh, staff uh, liaison assigned, and Ms. Knight and I are still working on that. There's a, a, a reason for a slight delay <coughs> that, uh, that we can't discuss right now. But um, we're looking to have a staff liaison to assist Miss Knight as she's on the way out the door, and myself and the new town manager <laughs> with that project. <laughs> I, I just don't want to leave you hanging. I want to push you forward on this. Yeah, no, we're, we're good. We're good. So, the, if there's no more questions, uh, Mr. Bond, I think we're ready for a vote. Okay. All those in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And the third uh, item from the Administrative Committee is a recommendation that Council approve uh, a classification of positions for Assistant Finance Officer and a Customer Service Representative slash Accounting Technician as presented at the um, committee meeting. We, we talked about this, and I think everyone as part of the discussion thought it was a good idea. I would put it in the form of a motion that we approve those classification of positions. Second. Is there any discussion on this? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. And thank you also. The fourth and final item that the administrative committee has for the full council tonight is it's recommended that council extend the COVID-19 paid sick leave policy as presented. Um, I think the existing policy, Tammy, has it expired now? and we're asking that it be extended to the end of the year. Um, we felt like it was good back when we first voted on it, and certainly in light of some of the increasing numbers of cases that we've seen, um, the administrative committee and everyone who discussed it felt like it was a good idea to extend that up to the end of the year, and I'll put that in the form of a motion that we extend the COVID-19 paid sick leave policy as it was presented. Second. Okay, it's been motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. And that uh, concludes our administrative committee reports. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Thank you, sir. Finance committee. So we have one thing on tonight. It's very exciting. It's recommended that the council adopt a resolution approving the financing terms for the Pierce Enforcer Pumper, which is a fire truck. Uh, we discuss this in depth and um, appreciate the chief helping us with this. And uh, I just put that in the form of a motion. Second. It's been a motion and second. Are there any discussions or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That's it for the Finance Committee. Thank you, sir. Public Works Committee. Mayor Pro Tem, we have uh, two actual business. Uh, at our last committee meeting, I reported that back in 2020, the town received a $150,000 grant from the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality to conduct a comprehensive asset inventory and assessment of the town's water system. As you recall, the town contracted with Stroud Engineering to conduct the inventory and assessment uh, at the July 26th committee meeting via Zoom, 
the council heard Mr. David Tootin from Stroud Engineering present an in-depth summary of that project. With that said, I, I make a motion that council formally accept the assessment report as presented by Stroud Engineering. Can I do a second? Second. Are there any discussions or questions? All those in favor of this motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Second item, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, is recommending council interview applicants for the Mayor's Task Force on Litter Prevention, Recycling, um, and the Environment. Uh, at our July 26 community meeting, you may recall that I mentioned the town had received several applications from the people from people willing to serve on this task force. I make a motion to council interview all applicants for the mayor's task force on litter prevention, uh, recycling, and the environment within a reasonable amount of time. Can I get a second? Second. Are there any questions or any discussion of this? Question uh, it's fine. Uh, are we going to do that as a, a group or, or would it affect individual applications? And, I think. Uh, I think we discussed it as a group, didn't we? Tammy and I debriefed <laughs> after the last meeting, and our recollection was that you wanted to treat this um, board and commission, this as the way you do your other typical boards and commission members, where you would in interview each person separately. Okay. We would invite, schedule them like 10 or 15 minutes apart, maybe start one of your upcoming meetings. Early. An hour or 45 minutes early. Do we know how, how many we will put on the, the the committee? That would be uh, that would help in terms of how many we have. Yes, I think you had talked about trying to keep that around seven, around seven members, okay. but that included um, the a county commissioner liaison okay. as one of the seven. Any more discussions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. May for 10 minutes. All we have for public, for public works. Okay, thank you, sir. New business. May Can I call you Boss Lady? Sure. Okay, Boss Lady. Okay. <laughs> so we have a couple um, items of new business for you to consider tonight. Um, the first one is pertaining to um, the water um, supply loan phase two that's going to finance the construction of the new groundwater storage tank at the Beaver Hill water treatment plant and then also help fund rehabilitation of some of your existing wells. And the um, state has approved all of our documents um, has authorized us to issue a notice um, to proceed. We can have a pre-construction meeting, but they said before um, we can submit any applications for reimbursement, which we have about $110,000 worth of engineering fees that you all have paid for um, to get us to this point with all the feasibility studies. We want to get reimbursed, but they said we have to pay for the loan closing fee, um, which is $36,000. Um, there is money in contingency. However, if um, at the end of the project um, we haven't spent that contingency, we can seek reimbursement for the loan closing costs. But in order to get going and to be able to get $110,000, we need to pay <laughs> $36,000 in the loan closing fees. So Virginia prepared the budget amendment to take those um, that funds out of water and sewer reserve and then appropriate a um, transfer from water and sewer to the um, capital projects ordinance for this project. And that's going to leave us a sufficient reserve left in that reserve fund? Yes. Especially since we'll be able to get 110 back. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's good. We and so you do need a motion um, to approve. Can we, can we get a motion? So moved. Budget amendment. Second. And a second. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Please continue. 
and actually I described the two budget amendments collectively, but um, you also need a budget, uh, a separate motion to transfer the loan closing fee from the water and sewer fund to the capital project ordinance. They're two separate or, um, two separate motions. So move, Mayor. Right Can I get a second? Second. No more discussions. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, the third item is <coughs> approval of an agreement with um, a law firm that specializes, or one of their specialty is providing bond counsel services to local governments. And the um, USDA, uh, I'm sorry, the State Department of Environmental Quality last week approved our permit um, application for the renovations to the existing wastewater treatment plant. And that project is funded by USDA by a loan and a grant. Um, the loan will involve um, the issuance of um, revenue bonds. And in order to issue revenue bonds in North Carolina, the Local Government Commission requires um, us to hire uh, bond counsel to help oversee that very, um, how would you describe it, Sambo? Um, the attorneys can describe Difficult it. Difficult and <laughs> complex. Tedious, yeah, complex, yeah. but a really, of, really. A lot of loopholes and opportunities to get. You've got, you got to have you got to have bond yes. counsel. Um, we, our first experience with bond counsel was back when um, we were doing the revenue bonds for the water treatment plant upgrades. And at that time, we solicited, we sent out RFPs, and I believe we got two proposals, and um, we, and the council ended up contracting with um, this firm, McGuire Wood, and uh, the reason back then was they seemed to have had more experience with smaller units of government, um, and Virginia and I took that to mean that they would kind of hold our hand through the process which they did, and they also had some clients in the region, and when we checked with them, they said yes, they, they were very professional and kind to staff through the process. So um, I reached out to um, Bond Council, uh, to, to McGuire Wood, and asked them would they submit a proposal. Um, they were delighted that the town wanted to utilize them again. Um, their proposal is included in your packet, and um, the fee that um, would be for their services, I believe it was $20,000. And that fee is um, a line item and covered in the um, USDA project, bu bu project budget. So you would need um, a motion and um, a second to adopt or to authorize a uh, contracting with McGuire. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Second. Coleman. Any more discussions? If not, all that in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And the last item is um, adoption of the capital project budget ordinance. Um, Virginia um, Smith, our finance officer, has prepared, and this um, allows her to set up the accounting that will be necessary for the um, American Rescue Plan funding that we will receive. We actually received the first half of our um, appropriation last week, $735,235. And this um, allows, like I said, Virginia to set everything up. And um, she recommended that we establish a contingency line item. And you know that we're not allowed, staff is not allowed to spend money, or we do not spend money out of contingency without your approval. So we would have to come back if you decided on a project and amend this budget and reduce it, whatever amount you're going to spend from contingency and set up a specific line item. 
Uh, that seems to be a, that's half they were receiving, right? I thought we were getting 1.3 million, it looks like we we're getting 1.4, yes, 5 yeah. or someplace like that. It's a larger it, grant it, than we anticipated. It, it, it is, and Virginia has noted in some of the webinars that the early projections, um, we were told, likely were going to change. So okay. I think this is reflective of what we're going to okay. get. That's good, okay. I can't believe I'm leaving and all this money's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> and you're leaving. <laughs> you're leaving us in a good spot. <laughs> you're going to have a great time Spending deciding time. What? what impactful well, projects. I don't know how many times left over when Sam over here through it. We've heard a lot about what people want. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We need a motion. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Uh, our next item is considered timely and important. Is there any council member has I'm sorry. Go right ahead. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. I know. I mean, I'm calling that the good one. Um, two items, Mayor. Uh, first, uh, Council recall that back on April 13th of this year, we passed a resolution honoring the uh, life and accomplishments of Dr. Alan Hornthal, and I had the pleasure of presenting. Um, original resolutions to his um, wife and to his two daughters last Wednesday night and it was truly a heartfelt uh, and emotional acceptance on their part and they were sincerely appreciative of this council uh, recognizing their um, husband and, and their father in that way and I'd just like the minister to reflect uh, their appreciation uh, for the fact that we honor Dr. Hornthal in that fashion. Um, secondly, um, I would ask that uh, Ms. Knighton and uh, Virginia Smith get together, if they could, and provide us a spreadsheet of all of the loans that we currently have, including the ones that we've just entered into, and provide us the annual or monthly payment, and provide us a payoff amount, and also provide us when that loan will be paid in full. Um, Councilman Coleman and I are new to this process, and scares us a little bit. It seems like we're spending a lot of money for very worthy projects, but I just want to get some type of snapshot picture. And I am I so could. sorry. Virginia set up that document several years ago, and we updated, and she updated it after it um, appeared that you were going to approve the um, fire truck loan and she sent it to me and I meant to put it in the packet. So we have it. We have okay, exactly great, what you're asking great. for and yeah. we'll um, the new manager will do a better job of remembering to <laughs> present that to you when we are talking to you about new debt. Right. Because you're right. asking the right questions. Okay. Um, yeah, certainly. That would just be good information, just kind of like a dashboard mm -hmm. for us to have. Okay. Thank you, Miss Knight, as always. Roger? Yeah. I yeah. Uh, last year, uh, we set up the uh, Human Relations Commission. I know they've been meeting since the first of the year, and I was wondering if at, at some point we could get a report, uh, an update on where they are and, and what's happening. Uh, it would be nice to, to know <laughs> where uh, the commission well, is. They've been working very hard, and as a ma matter of fact, um, we are anticipating presenting you with a report at the um, August 23rd. Okay. I didn't want to put a pressure on it, but I think we're all anxious to, to, to hear what, what they're coming up with. Councilman Miller? I know we're filling uh, uh, positions on task force and different committees, but how are we doing with our town boards? Are they, do we have vacancies in town boards that have not been filled yet? We do, and we've been working, that's one of the things we've been working with the Human Relations Commission on. Um, we, they asked me to set up time, and we've done that at most of the meetings where um, the board chairs of your various boards and commissions come to a Human Relations Commission meeting and give them an overview of the board members' responsibilities. And then the commission, Human Relations Commissions, are um, 
looking, searching, encouraging people to apply for these vacancies. Um, we have um, several applications we're trying to get uh, lined up for you to interview. Um, planning board, board of adjustment. I think we're going to have one upcoming on Historic Preservation Commission. Thank you. I guess this was Elizabeth planning. Are we any closer to getting these crosswalks just painted at the farmer's market? <clears throat> that was one of the things I mentioned to our um, committee, steering committee, with this project that we're working on. But it's high priority for me um, to work past the we, That's a DOT street, so we have yeah. to do whatever according to what their parameters are, using their preferred paint width, et cetera. Okay. It's just, it, you know, Saturday it could be a brick, it could be a brick paper. Or <laughs> <laughs> I'd, be lucky to get across. I'd be lucky just to be paint. <laughs> but then, so, yeah. Thank you. Right. I haven't said anything. I don't know about other people, but I noticed a new bus. So we have a new trolley? Yeah, a new trolley. That is the beautiful paint and design on the bus. Make me, on the trolley. Make me want to ride myself. But, <laughs> but it really looks good. I think it's for uh, those that designed and, and did it right now, and I think it did a good job for you. Well, thank you. And we are planning to have it down here prior to a council meeting so you can get on board and get a, um, a, a sneak peek of how it looks inside. It, it's, um, I think it's being well received by the community and certainly the visitors and the uh, trolley drivers like it a lot too. So. Those trolley drivers are fantastic. But thank you. We'll pass that on to the team. Thank you. The trolley drivers wave to you. Well, and, yeah, and I think it's a good idea if we, sometimes if we all take it because yeah, it goes through our new you know, economic um, I mean, redevelopment zones and it really is has a lot of great history that we didn't you know highlight before that it's highlighting now and so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really proud of the tour people get and the education they get when they're on it as well mm -hmm. as how good it looks. It seems to be filled. Mm -hmm. A lot of visitors. Any more comments? That's it. Uh, public comments. You take the podium. Give us your name, your address, and uh, you got three minutes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you can go over a little. <laughs> you don't want to say that. So. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem, and ladies and gentlemen of the council. My name is Jonathan Tobias. I live at 305 Country Club Drive. You might know me as a visitor to Edenton who fell in love with this place the very moment I pulled up to the Barker House five years ago and decided to stay. Recently, however, Edenton's become even more important to me because uh, my family just discovered that my great-great-great-great-grandfather Malachi Cooper, who served under General Nathaniel Green in the Revolutionary War, we didn't know this, but we found out that he was born and reared and was married right here in Edenton. <laughs> I'm just shocked at that. <laughs> this happy surprise has served to double down on my affection for this place and its history. History is a delicate thing and much work is required to preserve and protect things of beauty and tradition. So that's why I'm here tonight to offer a simple suggestion for that very purpose. About two months ago, I was waiting at the stoplight by the post office, and then a full-size semi-truck was attempting to turn left from Broad on the church. He didn't seem to notice that my tiny little black Chevy Cruze was lying smack dab in his difficult trajectory. In order to avoid an existential disaster, I had to back up almost all the way to the courthouse street. As this behemoth passed within centimeters of my front left quarter panel, the colonial narrow street, the pavement put down by the WPA underneath my car actually trembled. 
and as the vehicle, so out of place for a historic district, proceeded down Church Street, leaves and branches from overhanging crepe myrtles were snapped off by the high trailer, and I'm sure the old windows of the Iredale house rattled and shook. I knew where he was going. He had exited US 17 at Virginia Road and was heading south to the Sound Bridge on State Route 32. So here's my suggestion. I recommend that significant signage should be put up at the four gateways in the town, <coughs> saying something like that, except for local business, semi-trucks are not permitted in downtown Edenton. Through traffic going between US 17 and the Sound Bridge would be redirected to Houghton Road instead. Doing this, I know, won't completely solve the problem of heavy traffic inflicting wear and tear on a fragile historic place, but it would at least help. It would mean that my friend Mr. Madison wouldn't have to come running out of the Barker House to assist poor, beleaguered drivers trying to accomplish a three-point turn at the memorial a three-point turn that turns into four or five or ten points all too frequently. And while this sorry procedure is dragging on, the Edenton trolley has to disembark its passengers two blocks up the street. I know my daughter is one of the docents. It would mean that we wouldn't have to repair the ten-inch deep divots that were incised just last week onto the grassy berm right across the street from this very location. It would mean that the gracious historic homes on Queen and King and even Water Streets would not have to suffer semi-trucks getting squeezed to a stop, blocking their tiny streets like a chicken bone lodged sideways down a vertical throat. It would mean that our tourists and residential pedestrians, bicyclists, and automobile drivers would not have to throw their drive into reverse just to avoid apocalyptic mayhem. And I would think that it would actually improve upon the mental health of truck drivers who really would be better off going down a nice road like State Route 37, which is a lot more rational and hospitable to a semi than dodging and then driving off, uh, across that dog leg across the train track where Yopham Road becomes East Church Street. I know that this can get a little complicated with the county and the DOT, but as I said, history and beauty are fragile things, and they are worth cherishing and protecting. It might be difficult, but it seems to be worth it for a lovely little town that my great, 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 <laughs> Grandfather Malachi, 250 years ago, called his hearth and his home. Thank you for your kind welcome and consideration. Thank you, sir, for your concern. Uh, that issue has been addressed several times, and I think it's up on the document to be looked at again. We, uh, there's a long history of the town trying to regulate truck traffic. Um, we had a lot of um, work and study done by NCDOT, and I won't go through all of the history. I'd be happy to meet with you and talk with you, but we certainly need to look at existing signage and what can be done to improve signage. Um, but we'll, um, and things may have changed with DOT regulations, so we can. Could, could our senator and representative, could they put a bill in? See, we, we've sort of beaten this dead horse to the point that, I mean, it drives me crazy when I see them. They, they don't come down here once in their life. <laughs> yes. But, I mean, it, it does happen a lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, we'll talk to DOT and yeah. see if anything has changed. And mm -hmm. if not, you know, perhaps that's an option. Okay. We look into it. No, thank you very much. It's a problem that's been going on for a long you. time. No, thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it.
Okay. I'm going to need a motion to go into a closed section of North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A6 to consider personnel matters regarding applicant of the position of town manager. Can I get a motion? Can I get a second? Any discussions? If not, all that are in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll say it, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. We are now back into our normal section. Do I need a motion to close that, or can I just hit this hammer? I think you can. You want to close the meeting? You want to adjourn? Yes. Yeah, well, well, do I need to ask the question? Do can I get a motion to adjourn the regular meeting? So moved, Mayor Pro Tem. Exactly. It uh, There are not any questions. I know, right? I'm dirty. <laughs> 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 it has been.